Hi everybody, it's Mark from Blue Poodle Studio, and today we're here to celebrate and talk about Steven Spielberg's The E.T. The Extraterrestrial. Uh, this is the 40th anniversary of the film, released in 1982, and hard to believe it's been that long. If you haven't seen the movie, you're going to want to see it after we talk about it today. But we're going to talk a little bit about the film, its production, some of the key themes, but more importantly, because this is the Blue Poodle Studio, we're also going to talk about toys. So we got some fun stuff to share with you on that. So uh, this is a film that was fairly still early in Spielberg's career, and um, the film was developed uh, actually with his uh, one of his writing partners, Melissa Matheson, while they were on set in Tunisia filming the first Raiders of the Lost Ark film. And at that time, Steven Spielberg was feeling lonely and was kind of waxing uh, and reminiscing about his own childhood and some of the ways he struggled, but he was kind of an odd character. He was a little bit of a geek before that became popular and he was also um, a young Jewish man living in had been living grew up in mostly Gentile suburbs but also his parents divorced when he was about 16 and divorce is always difficult but you know Steven Spielberg uh, did the best he could but at that time it, it hit him pretty hard and he had a lot of sadness and anxiety about that and he'd also had just finished Close Encounters of a Third Kind so aliens were kind of on his mind in any event kicking this around um, Melissa Matheson went off on her own and wrote the first draft of E.T. the Extraterrestrial and it only went through about two more revisions uh, before it went into production and uh, Spielberg was working with Universal Studios, had a lot of good sponsors there, and the film went into production. Now, a couple things to take into consideration. One is, of course, this was pre-digital era, so the E.T. character was designed and built by special effects expert uh, Carlo Gimbaldi. Um, as a puppet, basically animatronic puppet, similar to a lot of what comes out of the Muppet Labs. Um, and so uh, it even had, uh, they, they tell the story about how um, his eyes were patterned after Albert Einstein. And the whole idea of the character was to have this creature who is both simultaneously childlike, but also the sort of ancient wise character. And so those come together. And in the story then, of course, Elliot, his own self, the main character, is also, his family is undergoing some turmoil because his parents have also just divorced and he's been hit pretty hard by this. And so Elliot, the lead, lead young man in the character, is also alienated much as Steven Spielberg was, feel lost and alone. And of course then, of course, he meets up with E.T. E.T. Uh, is part of an exploratory party from another planet and they've come like biologists to gather samples of plants and everything. But uh, interestingly, Curiosity got the best of E.T. because he's wandering around the forest, taking in the magnificent vista of all this stuff. But in the meantime, then he gets lost and his spaceship takes off without him. So in the end, you basically have Elliot, the alienated young man, and the alien becoming best friends. And so, uh, again, uh, the puppet character himself was uh, brilliantly rendered, and uh, there was a point at which Spielberg went back and tried to digitally recreate the character, but that did not work. And he really came to value, most importantly, the honesty and authenticity of the character as designed. Uh, the other thing which was different about this film was that it was also uh, shot more chronologically so that the young uh, the the cast of young kids who play in the film can get to know the character so uh, and and of course by the time you get to the closing scenes uh, which are very heartbreaking as uh, Elliot excuse me as E.T. is escaping from kind of his hero's escape he's escaping both from the law and the scientists but also he wants to escape from the planet because he wants to go home he wants to be with his own family um, and that's hard because they had grown such a close bond together that they hated to see him leave. So uh, again, if you haven't seen the film, uh, you would know that there are some really heartbreaking scenes at the end uh, where they have to say goodbye. Uh, the also. other touching moment at the end is uh, Drew Barrymore plays Elliot's younger sister and he she also uh, is very sad to lose this really great friend that they have made. So uh, it is a, a story about communication and bridging the gap between uh, people that are like you and people that are not like you, which I guess is a lesson that would uh, resonate still today, certainly. So uh, let's talk about toys. So of course, uh, and the product that I still have, that we have in the collection. So of course, uh, knowing me, uh, 
school supplies always figure prominently, so I do actually have some ET school supplies, uh, a notepad, a little scribble pad, a portfolio with some of the great iconic imagery on it, so that's some very uh, fun stuff. Also, and a little bit less common today, is glassware. So here is some souvenir glassware from Pizza Hut done in 1982. And of course, they follow very key story beats. So uh, here is the very uh, heartwarming scene where Elliot and E.T. are saying goodbye, and he touches his forehead and said, I will always be with you right here. Uh, here's uh, E.T. at home uh, having a good time hanging out with the, the plush in the closet and kind of a funny scene there. Uh, of course, E.T. is constantly missing his own family, so he too is wants to go home, wants to reconnect with people. And then finally, uh, again, this great scene at the end where um, E.T. Uh, and Gertie have to share a moment, and of course he's holding the flowers that he brought back to life in the film. So uh, some very, very poignant moments. So what about toys? You know, toys to some extent have only in the last couple decades become more collectibles. Certainly in the 80s, toys were thought of as cheap and things that were disposable and throwaway because, well, they're for kids, they're not anything too fancy. But uh, but as I learned in my time at Disney and others, toys become can become a talisman, if you will. They become a, a way of remembering a great experience, and in this case, remembering the positive experience of this film. So here, we do have some original uh, 1982 uh, action carded action figures. This is the little uh, wind up ET that walks along and his ha his hands move there. Uh, here's the famous uh, kind of hero's escape scene where Elliot gets uh, ET in the basket of his bike and they've got their little camaraderie of kids and they pedal up into the sky with ET's magic. And it's just a heartwarming, beautiful moment uh, from the film. Uh, Here's another fun little uh, wind-up toddle toy uh, kind of goes along. And then, of course, uh, part of the fun of E.T. is he uh, a cute little character and has a very beautiful childlike moment. So I've got a series of little collectibles here. Here's uh, E.T. with his sea and spell that became his communicator, and he's wrapped in the blanket like a little kid. Uh, here's E.T. Uh, wandering the house in a bathrobe, and he raids the refrigerator and gets into a bunch of trouble in that regard. Uh, here's, uh, E.T. has, um, some very important powers of life, and he actually heals some flowers and brings them back to life. So here's, uh, E.T. holding a little basket of flowers. And then, of course, uh, one of my favorite bits is, uh, E.T. Uh, dressing up in costume for Halloween, and he dresses up like a, like a little, like a young woman, if you will. So lots of just crazy, fun, memorable moments, but that's where the toys are so powerful. They become such a great... Um, again, almost a talisman to remember the film, which is why I think toys still resonate with people today. So, uh, again, if you've not seen the film, uh, which is hard to believe, I'm sure you will want to see it now. And, and I think if I was to take away some key lessons here, it is about no matter how isolated or alone you feel, there's always someone out there to reach out and help you. And that good communications are always important. That we see that Elliot figured out how to bridge the gap between himself as this lonely child and this strange creature from outer space, and they become fast friends. And those experiences then also can inspire us in the rest of our lives. So great chatting with you today. Uh, if you haven't seen the film, hope you get out to enjoy it. And uh, we'll continue to share a few more details of some of the toys in future posts. Thanks again. Be sure to, of course, follow us uh, on Instagram and Facebook, as well as uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks again, everybody. Have a great day.